Harley Quinn, Season 3, Episode 8, Title, Batman Begins Forever. This episode I found to be a lot better, a lot better from the last couple of episodes when you had the Joker episode which felt like, hey, it's a couple of neat jokes, but I just didn't, felt then I felt like why was it here I didn't kind of treat you anything to the story outside maybe a, a couple of hints a couple of winks that hey Joker's mayor now then last week's episode I, I enjoyed half of it but then you have the situation of Clayface and King Shark and feeling like the show ones don't know what to do with the characters now and I really feel it's still present in this episode. I mean, King Shark is just like, yeah, I'm here, and then I'm gone for the rest of the episode. And I'm like, what's the point of you here? Like, I'm a big fan of, like, if it's if you can't find room for this character, try your very hardest for not having them in that season or in that episode until you know what to do with the character. Not every character needs to be in a episode. So... Like, not every episode has Batman, not every episode has Joker, not every episode of the show has this cat or Catwoman or whoever. But, they're there nearly, right? So, it still aches me. And same with Clayface. Clayface in this episode, outside of the whole joke about him doing a Thomas Wayne biopic, and knowing the story of this episode, which is... Holly in last week's episode kidnapped Bruce Wayne because they know Bruce Wayne has Frank and so Harley and Ivy contact Dr. Psycho and the three of them along with Clayface so the four of them enter into the mind of Bruce Wayne which is very interesting knowing us as the audience knowing who Bruce Wayne is of course he's Batman so you're curious about like what does Bruce having his mind outside of the obvious thing which they immediately do like it opens the first thing that these characters enter into the mind of Bruce Wayne is crime alley and of course they do the mighty gag of them seeing the Waynes getting shot a hundred billion times over and 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 over again and um and so they can make the joke about, oh, well, if we fucking get it, you know, the Wayne's got shot. How many damn times I need to see the Wayne's getting shot? The, you know, I get it, I get it. You know, the, Dr. Psycho makes that joke. And it's, you know, so funny because it's true. It's like, how many times do I, as always, need to see the Wayne's getting shot? I know how Bruce becomes Batman. Thank, thank you, you know, Matt Weaves for not doing that. Um, but with the jokes out through, like having... You know, tiny little Bruce Wayne saying, I'm Batman, you know, out of those little humor and pepper out through the episode, it's a very drama episode. It's a very emotional episode because, you know, Bruce is a very traumatized guy. You know, he witnessed his, you know, parents getting killed at a very young age and this darkness is in him since then. You know, the whole concept of Batman is that Bruce Wayne died that in that alley and Batman was born in that alley and it's so like here's the thing about this episode like they do put humor in there to just pepper things out like you know we're going through Bruce's memories we're going through like the first time him wearing the suit and he's like questioning like Alfred Alfred is, the, is my ears a little bit too big because I feel like they're a little bit too big Meanwhile, I was like, ah, he's wearing, wearing his first appearance suit, you know, with the, you know, perfect gloves and all that kind of stuff back in, like, 1939, right? So, I, I got a kick out of that. But they give you a nice little bit of humor. You get even stuff like, you know, eight-year-old Bruce saying, I'm Batman, like, it, it, it's, it's funny, it's funny, it's just, or adorable or cute. They find a way to have that level of levity in, in this episode, but this is heavy. This is really heavy because Batman's a heavy character and we're dealing with trauma. We're dealing with a guy who's not that hinge. He's he's not, he's just a, a tragic thing that has happened in this guy's life. And he's unable to move forward from it. Even still being the thing that he is, you know, he can still be Batman, but, you know, he might 
be able to move past the main the main event that made him go go on this life and it's just so well put together you know even with like them making fun of the couple of the batman movie lines like why do we fall master bruce so we can learn to pick ourselves up yes that's exactly why i was going to say yes exactly they exactly like you know or making you know lines like you know uh first of, as a man i'm flesh and blood but as a symbol i'm something more like they make lines make fun of lines like that and 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 you know even little easter eggs here and there and yeah you, know, you hit like the day of and batman theme occasionally they find a way to have that humor but still make it feel emotionally heavy and harley is not harley in this episode at least a good chunk of it at least towards bruce because bruce is to her this eight-year-old child who is going to witness his parents death constantly she can feel that trauma and so harley's just harley quinzel in this episode enjoyably and it's just so well put together how caring and the psychiatrist will kind of come up and the therapist and and that and now I, I mean nearly at the end now not not like the evil plan part where like it does feel like their, their version this show's version of batman it feels like the story uh of what they want to do with the character is starting to end because the moment you make the hero the villain you know because Harley's a villain, Poison Ivy is a villain, Dr. Psycho is a villain. It's like the, the, the you know, the main characters of, of this show are villains, right? And, but they're the heroes. But the heroes are the villains that, you know, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, you know, though the, the Justice League, they're, they're, you know, making them who are normally the heroes the villains. It's, it feels like, okay, you're starting to wrap it up a little bit. The moment Bruce finds happiness, and the most the, the moment Bruce realizes, oh, I don't need to do this anymore. That's kind of kind of how you wrap up the, the, this version of that of this character. But there's a scene nearly at the end, not the last last scene, but that last last scene kind of helps motivate the the plot, the the, the evil plan, you may say. And it's very emotional hook. Like it's it's all the stuff that we all know. It's all the stuff I repeat about. You know, Bruce. You know, Bruce died when you know when your parents got shot. But Batman was. But who stand up was Batman. Like yeah, I said that. But the way they worded it, I don't like. I got Misty Eye. I got Misty Eye. I like this is a character that I <laughs> like. I might have a little bit too much of of a. Uh, unhealthy obsession with this character but i just and i think what he is is that emotional hook outside of like yes he's you know the worst greatest detective yes he's the guy with no powers you know he's able you know like it's funny part of the justice league yeah you would think you don't want to fuck with superman you don't want to piss off like wonder woman or green lantern or flash or the one with superpowers no, the one that you do not want to piss off is the guy with no powers. Like that's yeah, you know, there's all yeah, you know, there's all those cool aspects of things. You have bad guy, he's always a pair, he's able to fight Superman win and the whole thing, right? But there's that human emotional element to the character that I think really draws the meaning of it. Um and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> you guys hit me god i'm getting emotional getting the scene i'm getting emotional over the scene uh, over the, the dialogue of him talking like why i st you know why i you know do i do why I wait till the back signal shows up it's just really beautifully put together and i'm like and his plot makes sense the evil plan makes sense and I'm like I don't know how you guys are able to top it I don't know how you guys are able to top it and it's just a thumbs up for me